Hello, welcome to Idaho Fishing Game, Salmon Regions Fish Scoping Virtual Open House. I'm Mike Demick, easement specialist, communication manager for the Salmon Region. I'll be assisting tonight as a moderator. Thank you for taking the time tonight and sharing the evening with us and hopefully we'll all learn something. We are here tonight to listen to your ideas and to answer your questions in relation to our efforts in developing the 2022 through 2024 fish seasons and rules. Tonight's get together is the first step in the formal scoping process. Anglers have until April 11th to provide us their ideas and their comments. After this initial feedback process, your suggestions will be considered and presented to the Fish and Game Commission at their May 5th and 6th meeting. This feedback will help us develop formal season proposals, and you will have another opportunity to view these proposals and submit your comments later this summer, July and August. Be sure to visit our website and social media platforms for more information on how you can submit your comments and when you can. Based on this feedback, our fishery staff will then develop season recommendations and present them to the Fish and Game Commission at their November 15th and 16th meeting where they will set the final seasons. This will give us just enough time to get everything together and sent to our printers so they can print and deliver before January 2022. The approved proposals will be incorporated in the 2022-2024 regulations. So with that, I would like to introduce Greg Scoby. Greg is our regional fisheries manager here in the Salmon region, who will introduce staff and get the meeting started. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, as Mike said, I'm, I'm Greg Scobie. I'm the regional fisheries manager here in the Salmon office in the Salmon region. Uh, we're here tonight with a handful of our fisheries staff. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, we've got a staff of uh, three fish biologists here that work on the management side of things. And then we've got a handful of folks that also work in a lot of the habitat restoration actions that are going on here in the upper salmon. Uh, hopefully people had a chance to watch the video that was posted on the webpage, uh, both the regional video and the uh, Joe Kozofka's kind of statewide overview of how this season setting process works. So hopefully people have had a chance to view that, uh, have had a chance to come up with some good questions and ideas, and hopefully they'll share them with us here tonight. So now I'm going to pass things around and let these biologists here in the room introduce themselves. Thanks, Greg. Hello, I'm Brent Beller, and I am the regional biologist in the Anadromous Harvest Monitoring Program for the Salmon Region. Now I will pass over to Caden for him to introduce himself. Hi, my name is Caden Eastep. I'm the resident fisheries biologist here in Salmon. Uh, my duties include managing the lakes and reservoirs and a lot of the streams um, around the region. I'll pass it on to Connor. Thanks, Caden. My name is Con McClure. I'm the anadromous fisheries biologist in Region 7, and I oversee a lot of the salmon and steelhead anadromous fisheries monitoring. So there's a, there's a few of the folks that work in the region. I'm going to try and bring up a slide here to show a few other things as we move into this. So again, here's, here's the folks that uh, just introduced themselves, myself, Caden, Brent, and Connor. Uh, we also have Eric Geistard, who works with Connor on the anatomist uh, monitoring research side of things. Uh, those of you that may be in the, the Magic Valley, Jerome region, uh, you'll get to know Connor a little bit better. He just recently took a transfer down to region four. So he might be sitting in on that meeting tomorrow. Uh, and soon we'll have Megan Heller shown here, um, joining our crew to, to fill the position that he's vacated. So she'll be here about the end of May. And that pretty much rounds out our fish management staff. As I mentioned a little bit earlier and mentioned in the, uh, the previous video that was posted, we do have a large uh, staff up here that also works in uh, anadromous uh, habitat restoration work and monitoring of those actions. So that's that's a handful of the people that work here uh, in the Upper Salmon. I also wanted to 
just kind of give a brief overview similar to, to what was in the video, but when you look through the, the regulations, so shown here on the left, obviously is the map of the salmon region. Shown on the right is the, uh, the general regional rules. Uh, and then we just have this one page of exceptions to those general rules. So we've, we've worked really hard to try to make things as simple as possible and as consistent as possible in our, in our regulations. Um, so, you know, when we, we put this up a week or so ago and people were starting to put some, some comments online in the, in the chat box or in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the web form that was provided, uh, we got a fair amount of feedback. A lot of that was geared towards primarily our anatomous fisheries. So I'm going to turn things over to, to Brent Bell, or he's going to talk primarily on the, the Chinook seasons and how those are set. Uh, he'll, he'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Um, it, it kind of happens outside of this process, the, the three-year regulation cycle. Uh, he can describe that more, how the seasons are set on an annual basis. Okay, well, thanks again, Greg. Uh, like Greg mentioned, we received quite a few questions and comments regarding our anatomous fisheries in the Upper Salmon River. And we definitely appreciate everyone taking their time to provide us with their input. Many of the comments we have received so far, they centered around how we manage our Chinook salmon fisheries. And I would just like to take a moment to briefly go over the season setting process and provide everyone with some links where they can find more details regarding Chinook salmon season setting. So Chinook salmon season setting in Idaho takes place annually and falls outside of the current scoping process for the 2022 through 2024 general fishing seasons and rules. Typically for the Upper Salmon River, Chinook salmon season proposals are made to the IDFG commission between mid-May and early June once the majority of the run is passed over Bonneville Dam. These proposals vary each year and depend on the estimated number of harvestable salmon returning to the Cimarron and Sawtooth hatcheries, as well as the estimated returns of wild salmon to the Upper Salmon River and its tributaries. These proposals and the estimated harvest shares also take into consideration any downstream harvest that may occur during the particular year. Especially during low return years, lower Salmon River fisheries are structured in a way to minimize the amount of upstream fish that are encountered in the fishery. So back in February, we held a virtual live event where each regional fisheries manager gave presentations on how salmon seasons are set in their respective regions and what the Chinook salmon season proposals are for 2021. These videos are a valuable resource for any angler wishing to learn more about how salmon seasons are set in Idaho. And the easiest way to find these videos is to use the link shown on the screen or use the search bar on the IDFG website and type in Chinook 2021 live. Additionally, I would like to let everyone know about the Upper Salmon River Angler Survey that will be up on the website beginning tomorrow. This survey is a chance for Chinook anglers to provide input and help shape how future Chinook fisheries are managed on the Upper Salmon River. It is a short survey that we're hoping will help us determine how to balance things such as fishery duration with daily bag limits or daily closures, especially during years with low returns and low harvest share. There are also questions that'll help us to learn more about the preferences of anglers who fish the Upper Salmon River. And I'd just like to really encourage everyone to take the time to fill out the survey once it's available and share your opinions with us. Thanks again, and now I'll pass it back to Mike. Thanks, Brent. Um, yeah, we just had a comment come in about steelhead fishing and steelhead seasons. This person writes, I would like to see the steelhead season close earlier in the spring to better protect wild spawning fish. Greg, could you help answer that question? Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's a, that's a good question. And we've heard, <clears throat> excuse me, we've heard a little bit more about that in recent years, particularly in these these low return years. Um, so in the Upper Salmon River, you know, all the tributaries currently are closed to, to steelhead fishing. And of course, wild fish harvest is closed. Uh, most of our wild fish do spawn in, in tributaries. We do see some fish that, 
that spawn in the main stem um, of the upper salmon. Um, I think people do encounter some of those fish when they're angling up there, but that's also where we see the majority of our, our hatchery fish get harvested, you know, the, particularly the fish that are heading towards sawtooth hatchery. So we obviously want to continue to pro provide that opportunity. We want people to catch and, and harvest as many of those hatchery fish as possible. But uh, if, if this is a concern that people have, and you know, this is obviously the, the forum to bring that up in, uh, so it's something, something we can vet with the, the greater public at large. Uh, we do try to keep our steelhead rules fairly consistent, so we might have to work with the, the other regions that also have uh, steelhead fisheries to try and keep those seasons somewhat aligned. But uh, yeah, it's something we can certainly look into if that's what, what people would like to, to explore that, we can do that. So thanks, Mike. Okay, another question. Um, trout harvest in Williams Lake has dropped considerably over the past years as no stocking has been done for many years. Please consider to start a stocking program at Williams Lake again. Connor, would you like to answer this question? Sure, thanks, Mike. <clears throat> so yeah, historically, rainbow trout were stocked in Williams Lake all the way back in the 1930s. And from the mid 1960s to the mid 1980s, they were stocked on a pretty regular basis up in Williams Lake. And then in, in the mid 80s, the stocking program uh, pretty much came to a halt. But with a few exceptions, there were a couple times in the early 1990s, and then again in the early 2000s, where Idaho Fishing Game has stocked rainbow trout in Williams Lake. And so, all that being said, currently um, here in the region, we're evaluating the status of rainbow trout and bull trout, the two primary support fish in Williams Lake. In addition to that, we're also investigating um, a bridge up sucker population in the lake. And so the bridge up suckers are a native fish, but they're also introduced to the lake. And so there's been some concern from anglers about how or if the bridge up sucker population may affect the sport fish populations there in the lake, such as the rainbows and bull trout. And at this point, um, there's no reason for alarm. Uh, and actually we've seen bridge up suckers, juveniles being incorporated into the diets of the sport fish there in the lake. And so what we're doing is we're working on a management plan for Williams Lake that will guide us here for the next several years. And with that management plan, we're gonna be evaluating the body condition of the sport fish in the lake, be evaluating the shy structure, um, also looking at abundance, as well as looking at the body condition and abundance of, and, and movement of ridge up suckers in the lake. And so we're gonna take that information over the next several years um, and look at it and do some analysis. And then, yeah, you know, a few years down the road, if we're not seeing, um, you know, desirable opportunity for sport fish for anglers in the lake or, um, you know, opportunity seems to be decreasing or something like that. We're definitely wanting to consider uh, bringing stocking back to Williams Lake. So, um, yeah, thanks, Mike. Okay. Um... We have a couple questions about Wallace Lake. Um, one is also a stocking question. Um, this person says that restocking of Wallace Lake would be a great benefit for fishermen as well. Why is the trout limit only two at Wallace Lake? Caden, could you help answer this question? Sure, Mike. So folks, uh, folks know that I fish Wallace Lake uh, anytime recently, you know that we've been stocking tiger trout into Wallace Lake. Um, we've been doing that since 2015 in an effort to control the red side shiner population. Uh, prior to 2015, um, Wallace, Lake was, Wallace Lake was stocked with rainbows and cutthroat. Uh, these stockings weren't doing very well, uh, probably due to competition with the red side shiners. So that's how we came out to stocking tiger trout in Wallace Lake. And we've been stocking tiger trout since 2015 and have continued to do so up until last year and will continue at least through this year. Um, yeah, Wallace Lake also gets occasional breed stock of rainbows um, when we get those fish donated from folks like Clear Springs Hatchery. Um, but the tiger trout aren't doing as great of a job with the red side shiners as we have hoped. So currently we're exploring uh, maybe adding a different predator into Wallace Lake to, to control those, that shiner population. Um, and yeah, eventually we would like to uh, return the stocking cutthroat and rainbows to provide that opportunity at the Wallace Lake. 
And as for the second part of that question, uh, why is the trout limit only two oil flakes? So when we started putting the tiger trout in, we changed the rule uh, Wallace Lake to a two fish limit. Uh, that's just in an effort to keep those fish in the lake uh, to provide that biological control with the red side shiners and give them a chance uh, to, to keep those shiners um, in check. Outside of that, when we do happen to have other stockings like the brood stock um, that it's donated from other hatcheries, that two fish limit allows those fish uh, to be uh, distributed for the public for a little bit longer time than other than everybody going up and, and being able to harvest six like our general region rule. Um, yeah, so back to you, Mike. Thanks, Caden. Um, here's another question. I would like to propose removing the rule that requires the use of barbless hooks in salmon and steelhead fisheries. Oregon and Washington has made has made it legal for the use of barb hooks for salmon and steelhead in the Columbia River system. It seems pointless that we require barbed hooks for our salmon and steelhead when they are caught from the Pacific Ocean all the way through the Columbia River system with barbed hooks. Greg, would you like to help answer this question? Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's uh, that's an interesting topic, and that's an interesting point that yeah, fish are getting caught with barbed hooks from basically the ocean all the way up to up to here, and and we don't allow it. So, um, I think there's a, a couple things on that one that we would have to investigate a little bit. Um, first, the 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 science on say catch and release our concerns obviously are impacts to wild fish that are caught and released and aren't able to be harvested in our fisheries. Um, but the impacts for catch and release on barb versus barbless hooks, particularly pertaining to, to Chinook, uh, there's pretty limited data on that. I do know um, when Washington and Oregon went through that process to remove that rule, they had to go through the permitting process with NOAA again. And as people who've tuned into some of our Chinook presentations know that um, we have to apply a 10% catch and release mortality to Chinook that are wild Chinook that are caught in our fisheries. Uh, and I believe that that um, impact rate or mortality rate that NOAA applies to that went up with the use of barbless hooks for Oregon and Washington. I think it went to 12 or 13%, but um, not to say it's completely off the table. It's just something we'd have to look into a little bit more. Um, uh, another interesting twist on that to, to remove a barbless rule. So <clears throat> that actually falls under Idaho code, which is um, goes through the legislature as part of IDAPA. So it's Idaho um, Administrative and Procedures Act. So that's not a rule that our commission can change, but it has to go through the legislative process, which, which doesn't necessarily line up with our current uh, regulation and rule setting that we're doing right now. And again, not to say it's it's impossible, but it's just a kind of a different process we would have to go through if we want to um, explore that and look to changing that rule. So, thanks, Mike. So, okay, I'm on. Um, so, if anybody has any questions. Um, you can go down to the bottom of the video and there should be a, a box down there where you can ask a question and we'll hang on here for a little bit and see if anybody's participating and, and would like to ask us a question. If nobody does, we'll send her back to Greg. So yeah, Caden, would you like to, I guess you got a question. Yeah, so we just had a question come in uh, asking if we had a trail guide for high mountain lakes and we do. Um, we published one last year, uh, it came out I believe in June or July. Um, that is available through some of our local vendors and the Sam Regional Office. If you'd like to get your hands on that trail guide, uh, feel free to call or send an email and we can get one to you. Back to you, Mike. Yeah, and one thing that's a great tool for anglers is the fish planner. Um, for 
all kinds of information, maps, regs, uh, GIS layers where you can go in and print your own map. Um, it's a wonderful tool for anglers, especially those anglers who want to know just basic information, but also those anglers who want to find a really unique place to fish, say a high mountain lake somewhere. Um, it's a great tool. We hear great things about it from anglers. Um, a lot of what's in the, um, the, the, the guide, the high mountain lake guides, basically came from the fish planner. So I would really recommend folks, if they're interested, to take a look at that. Um, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, of information on our website, even uh, the wild and wild steelhead uh, page, which is pretty new. A lot of people have actually just discovered that here recently and they, they really enjoy it. So yeah, if you have any questions, you talk to one of our fisheries biologists in one of the regions and also uh, uh, check out the website. Um, <laughs> is this really a question? Um, okay. Uh, can we get perch fishing opportunities in the salmon region? Um, that would probably be Caden. Yeah, so that question is, can we get perch fishing opportunities in the salmon region? Uh, that's a little bit of a complicated issue in our region with the anadromous waters. Um, we can't allow any sort of introduced species to get into those anadromous waters um, due to this, some of the ESA concerns. Um, but yeah, it is definitely a possibility in the future. Um, we could, you know, find a way to screen a community pond or, or something like that to be able to get some panfish opportunity. Back to you, Mike. Okay, well, um, with that, we don't really have any questions. Um, like, I, like I said before, if anybody's watching and would like to ask a question, just go down to the bottom of the, the screen, type in a question, we'll be sure we got the professionals here to answer the questions and uh, uh, we can sure do that. So with that, um, we'll wait, what, a minute or two and, and go from there. So thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to just jump in here real quick. So I want to just reiterate that, yeah, if people, people don't have questions tonight, uh, we'll still be taking comments until uh, the 11th of April. Uh, I'm going to put up the screen one more time with uh, the some of the info on the Chinook fisheries that Brent was talking about. So again, you go back to the 2021 spring proposals page, there's a whole list of videos in there uh, from, excuse me, from the Clearwater region, the uh, McCall region and the salmon regions. Uh, there's also some some stuff out of the headquarters office talking about kind of the bigger picture stuff with um, downriver fisheries and predation issues and several several different topics like that. So that's a good resource for people. Um, and then again, as Brent mentioned, this uh, Upper Salmon River Chinook Angler Survey uh, that link will go live tomorrow. People can jump in and please fill that out. Uh, we'd like to get as much information from anglers that use the Upper Salmon River for our Schnick fisheries as possible. Uh, that would be very helpful in, in how we manage those seasons going forward. And then finally, as I mentioned, yeah, we'll be taking comments on the, the general fishing rules and regulation changes through April 11th. You can contact myself or any of the other folks here on the meeting tonight uh, at the regional office. The uh, phone number here shown on the screen is 208-756-2271 or I uh, flashed up the emails earlier. It's basically their first name dot last name at idfg.idaho.gov. And we're gonna do one last check to see if we've had any more questions come through. Uh, and if not, we will sign off for the night.
Okay, well, we haven't seen anything else come through, so I appreciate everybody that tuned in, everybody who watched the videos ahead of time and all the other comments we've received. And again, feel free to reach out to any one of us here at the office, uh, either, either through the online submission form or by calling the office or emailing any one of us. So thanks again, everybody. We appreciate the feedback and uh, keep in touch, you know, keep giving us comments and giving us suggestions of what you want us to do to help improve your fisheries. So thanks again, everybody.